Hello, this video is about independence of quadratic forms. It's going to be in my playlist called Quadratic Forms. But really, this was spurred on by a playlist that I'm creating, currently creating, called General Linear Models 1. And in it, we were looking at the simple linear regression. We did an example where we partitioned the total variability into regression and residual variability the, like this. It's, it's pretty well known if you've been into linear models. And then we showed that how to convert the scalar notation to matrix notation. And then, and then we want to develop a test statistic, but I need to show that these two quadratic forms are independent. And I didn't have a video on it. And so that's what we're going to do here. Now, I was very vague about this example, but the, you can go to the, my playlist, General Linear Models 1, and, and, and watch the development of this. So for this video, the theorem is this. If we let the vector y be multivariate normal with uh, length n, have a mean mu and a variance-covariance matrix sigma, and here we're going to assume that sigma is positive definite, which is, a, which is a safe assumption. Let a and b be n by n symmetric matrices, and if this condition is true, so A sigma B is zero, the zero matrix, then the two quadratic forms are independent. Now, in many videos, you'll see an extra word in here that's called symmetric idempotent matrices. And I don't think you need that. I think you just need symmetric. And also, you see it very common that that this is the identity matrix or sigma squared i. And then this becomes you know the identity matrix, then it's just a times b is zero. So both of those are, are are common variants of this theorem, but this is the more general one. And so let's go. So since sigma is positive definite, a non-singular matrix R exists such that uh, sigma is equal to R, R transpose. Now, whether this is the square root matrix or Chelatsky's decomposition, you know, there exists an R such that this is true. Now, let's let C, the matrix C, and I'm just going to go in order here. We have A and B, and, you know, we'll use C, D, E, and F. We're just going to go in order. Uh, we're going to let C equal this matrix, R transpose or A, R. We're going to let D equal R transpose BR. Now note that C and D are symmetric. So if we take the transpose of this, then that R gets shifted to the front, and then it's A transpose and then R. But, a, but we're assuming that A and B are symmetric. So that's why matrices C and D are symmetric. <laughs> now let's look at C times D. And if we plug in what C is and what D is, <coughs> then this piece here, R, R transpose, is sigma. <coughs> but we're assuming that A sigma B is zero. So this is zero. And since the zero matrix is symmetric, we can take the transpose of it, <coughs> which means, you know, since zero, the zero matrix was CD and then transpose, but we can take the transpose into this, so it's D and C, but D and C were symmetric, so that says C times D is equal to D times C. Now, because C and D commute, and now whenever you do a theorem, you, you always wonder how far back do you have to go to start proving things, and I stopped at this point, um, and maybe we'll go create another video and prove this, but I didn't for this video. So because C and D commute, they can be simultaneously diagonalized. And that's a pretty common theorem in the diagonalization world. Now, so that means an orthogonal matrix P exists such that we can pre and post multiply by C and we get a diagonal matrix E. We can pre and post D and get a diagonal matrix F. Now, where E and F are diagonal. Now, note that these are orthogonal. So, if we, if we 
pre multiplied by P and post multiplied by P transpose, we get C is equal to PEP. And we can do the same, D is equal to PFP. Um, now, also note that the zero matrix was C times D, which we showed up here, right? And C is PEP and D is PFP. Now the P prime P is identity, so we get this. But P and, and P prime are orthogonal, so we could actually multiply them to the other side. And that shows that E times F is the zero matrix. Okay? Now the next note, I, I put big note because this is critical. Now, E and F are, were diagonal matrices, right? Because these were, C and D were uh, simultaneously diagonalized. So these are diagonal matrices. So the big note is that since E and F are diagonal, when a diagonal element is non-zero, the corresponding element in the other matrix has to be zero. So when you multiply these together, the only way to get zero is that one or both of those di corresponding diagonal elements are zero, okay? That And that's a huge note there. Make sure that's right before you go on. So then we want to choose P such that when we diagonalize E, it's the first, I'm going to say, K elements are non-zero and the rest are zero, okay? And then that means F is diagonal means that we have all zeros and then the k plus one element is you know may or may not be zero and and all the way to f right so that way when these are multiplied together you get zero when there's a non-zero element here the corresponding element has to be zero and vice versa if these are non-zero that has to be zero of course they could both be zero right so now so that's the first big note. So let's move on a second here. So let's let W equal P prime R inverse Y. Then, now notice that the Y is, these were um, a normal random variable. So then the expected value of the vector W is you know, we take it in, the only random piece is the Y, so we take it in, and its expectation is mu. So this is the mean of W. Now the variance of W, we bring out these, these matrices out front, and then we transpose them out back, and then the variance of Y. The variance of Y was sigma, but sigma is R, R transpose right here. And then this times that, we get the identity. R transpose, R transpose inverse is the identity. P prime, P is the identity. So this is the identity. So the variance are, are, is, a, is identities. So we know that W, the vector W, is multivariate normal with this mean and variance covariance matrix I. Okay. So now the next big note is that the components of W are independent. So that means the J or the ith and jth element of W are, are independent. That's what this sign means here, right? And we know that because it's the identity matrix. The covariance is zero. And, and they're normally distributed, so they're independent. Right? So that's that's another key point there. Now let's look at the quadratic forms. So y prime, you know, y transfers a y. We, we plug in what we know about a. We called it um, this, r, r prime inverse c r inverse. Then c was p e p, right? But then r prime oh yes so so if we look at this piece right here p prime r inverse y that's what we were defining as w w 
right? So this piece, if we bracket it, that makes it easier to see. And then we bracket this, we transpose it, so we like untranspose it and we get this, which is this. But remember that E was a diagonal matrix, right? So when we carry out this sum, we get this. So from 1 to K, it's E I W I squared, right? Because K plus 1 on, these are 0. So this is the sum. Now let's look at B. Y prime B Y. Now B can be back solved for this, R prime inverse D, R inverse. But D was PFP, right? And again, this piece was W, like before. You know, we put brackets around it, and then we back transpose that, and we get this. So really, this is W prime FW. But F was a diagonal matrix, right? And non-zero at k plus 1. So this becomes this. k plus 1 to n fi wi squared. Well notice that the, the components of, of the vector w were independent. So this deals with the first k components and this deals with k plus 1 to n components. Right? So that says that these two sums are independent, right? Since the, the components of W are independent, which implies that these quadratic forms are independent. And that's the proof. And we only needed that the A and B are symmetric. It's not required to be idempotent, but it does make the proof easier. So anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.